welcome everyone to our uh, session today. I'm Erin Rose. I'm uh, one of the senior research associates at the conference board. Um, so today we're going to be talking about what is new uh, in the immigration consulting industry. Uh, before we get going, I'll just walk us through a couple of housekeeping uh, notes before we get started. So during the formal presentation, all of the attendees uh, are going to be muted. Uh, but if you do have questions during the presentation, please just type them into the chat box and Jolene will uh, relay them to either Dory or um, Chris during the presentation. After they're uh, done speaking, we're going to open the floor for an interactive uh, Q&A session. And so you can, at that point, um, either just type your name into the chat box and Jolene will call on you, um, or and you can um, unmute yourself and ask your question directly, or you can um, type your question right into the uh, chat box and Jolene will relay it. If you're joining us from the phone line today, Jolene will be checking in periodically with the phone line. And to unmute yourself, you're just going to need to press star six. Another reminder that we are holding this meeting under Chatham House rule, so all participants can use the information they receive from this from the session, but they can't identify uh, the speaker or their affiliation. Okay, so we've designed this session as a an interactive online meeting rather than a webinar or an online conference. So it's a chance for you uh, to learn not only from our uh, speaker, but also from one another. So please do take advantage of this and share, comment, um, and discuss. So with that said, let's get started with our session today on what is new in the immigration consulting industry. So we're very happy to be joined by Dory Jade and Christopher May today who are going to be leading this session. It's a really great opportunity for us here in the center to be kept up to date with what's going on in regard to the immigration consulting industry. So before I hand it over to Dory and Chris, I'm just going to share a couple of words about them. So we're going to hear first from Christopher May, and he is from the ICCRC, Immigration Consultants of Canada Regulatory Council. And we're excited to announce that ICCRC has officially joined the National Immigration Centre as a full-fledged member, and so they're going to be with us at all future events. We look forward to having their voice around the table with us and getting their input on our research program as we go forward. So we're going to hear from Chris May first. Chris is the Director of Public Affairs and Communications at ICCRC. He works to harness and enhance ICCRC's reputation, profile, and brand, embracing technologies and methodologies to support the regulator, regulator's uh, goal to be a thought leader, industry expert, and defender of the public interest. Planning development and measuring the effectiveness of public affairs and communication strategies and tactics help ICCRC reach their key audiences. Chris has over three decades of experience as a senior public affairs leader and advisor. He has significant knowledge of the regulated professions, stakeholder relations, and government affairs. Before joining ICCRC, Chris held a number of different positions within the Ontario and federal governments and has also worked with CPA Ontario and CFA Societies of Canada. Chris is also active in his community where he coaches children's sports and sits on the board of several community organizations. His community service has been recognized with a Queen Elizabeth II the Golden Jubilee Medal. Our second presenter today is going to be uh, Dory Jade. So Dory has been the CEO of KPIC since 2016. He's practiced as an immigration consultant for more than 15 years, serving on various boards for the last 13. Dory works closely with the Board of Directors, senior federal and provincial government officials, and the team at KPIC to strengthen the professional culture and its legal framework. Dory has applied his knowledge of finance, management, and communications to legal cases, government lobbying, and parliamentary and standing committee procedures. Dory has been a keynote speaker at some of our past conference board events, as well as at the National Citizenship and Immigration Conference. He's also contributed articles to national newspapers and is a guest speaker on national radios and TV stations. So we're pleased to have both of you with us um, today. So I'm going to hand it over now to you, Chris, so you can, um, at the top of your screen, you should say take over. 
see uh, take over as presenter. Great, and take it away. So, Chris, I think that you might still be on mute. I'm having trouble hearing your there audio. We <laughs> there we go. There we go. Sir. Um, so, as mentioned, my name is Christopher May, and I'm the Director of Public Affairs and Communications and a member of the Senior Management Team with uh, the ICCRC. I'm very happy that the ICCRC is becoming a member of the National Immigration Center. I was previously involved with the Conference Board's work in the immigration area with former colleagues Vicki Lederman and Carmen Jacks at CPA Ontario. As you'll notice, I'm broadcasting live from my living room, as many of you probably are. In response to COVID-19, the ICCRC closed its four office locations and moved all staff to remote operations as of March 16th, 2020. We have been keeping members and the public updated on our website FAQ page and with members e-blasts. We've been able to continue our regulatory functions re relatively seamlessly as all staff were already working from laptops and using video conferencing tools with office locations in Burlington, Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal. So the Immigration Consultants of Canada Regulatory Council, the ICCRC, is a national regulatory body that promotes and protects the public interest by overseeing Regulated Immigration and Citizenship Consultants, RCICs, and International Student Advisors, RISIAs. The, the number of practicing members, RCICs, is approximately 6,300, and we probably have approximately 200 RISIAs uh, that are in practice. The mandate of the ICCRC is similar to other regulatory bodies, establishing entry to practice requirements, licensing professionals, overseeing the professional development and conduct of members, receiving, investigating, and adjudicating, adjudicating complaints, administering a disciplinary process to sanction professionals who fail to meet the regulator's standards. Uh, however, the authority uh, for the ICCRC is lacking certain regulatory powers currently. Power to require documents and information, execution of a warrant, power to summon and compel third party witnesses, execution of payment orders, prohibition and injunction against unauthorized practitioners, extraterritorial jurisdiction, immunity and civil liability. However, the ICCRC is currently in transition. The current transition began with the 2017 SIM report, which made several recommendations to address significant challenges facing the immigration sector and the ICCRC itself. Examples included delays in resolving complaints against fraudulent consultants, lack of stringent consumer protection measures, and lacks education standards for registered immigration consultants. Today, we are in a better place to provide effective protection for newcomers to Canada and the immigration process due to action taken by the ICCRC and the federal parliament, along with the advocacy efforts of CAPIC and Dory's um, a member body. I'll let Dory Jade speak uh, to how the membership supported the transition to the college during his presentation. So a key recommendation of the report was the creation of an independent body, public interest empowered to regulate and govern. On June 21, 2019, almost a year ago now, the College of Immigration and Citizenship Cult uh, Consultants Act received royal assent. The college will have enhanced powers for professional oversight, enforcement, investigation, and governance for citizenship 
and immigration consultants across Canada and abroad. It will also have authority to deal with those who hold themselves out, but are not otherwise regulated or licensed to provide immigration and citizenship advice. We have been working closely over the past year with IC IRCC staff, translating the legislative intent of the College Act into regulation that will operationalize the college's new regulatory authority. At this time, we are awaiting proclamation of the College Act to set off the next steps in the process. Once proclaimed, the ICCRC uh, will issue its application to become the college and the minister will set a date for continuance upon which date the ICCRC formally changes to the college. The transitional board will be named to oversee the approval and adoption of the college bylaws and other procedures, including a new code of professional conduct for licensees. The minister will then issue an order setting the number and composition of the new permanent board of the college and the date it is to be in office. The college will then hold elections for the licensee directors of the new college board. So since the SIM report, the ICCRC itself has made significant improvements to its processes and its operational structure to strengthen the profession and protections in the public interest. It has also been preparing to assume the role as a college. The areas addressed have been increasing education and competency standards, streamlining and strengthening the complaint and discipline process, improving governance and revamping public communications and outreach strategies. A key component of this preparation has been the hiring of new senior leadership with significant regulatory experience. A new president and CEO, a dedicated director of professional conduct, a new director of professional standards, research, education and policy, a deputy registrar, and myself, a new director of public affairs and communications. Uh, this role was previously marketing and communications, so I'll talk about that a little bit later. The ICCRC uh, today is dramatically different than the organization that was the subject of the 2017 SIM report. We have worked very hard to make significant changes aimed at resolving the concerns and set the college up for success. A key area of improvement is in educational standards. The new graduate diploma in immigration and citizenship law replaces the current immigration practitioners program. The new diploma will educate learners to a new competency standard. It will ensure that prospective RCICs have a higher level of competence and educational credentials to meet rising professional standards. Queen's University has been accredited as the English provider with an official launch date in uh, January of 2021. Queen's just recently soft launched the portal to the program last week and will start enrollment uh, this fall. If you're interested in finding out more, you can go to their portal, which is immigrationdiploma.queenslaw.ca. I'll put that into the chat box a little later. Another area is improving the practice management education program. Also uh, going undergoing revisions to transform this program into a modern blended learning experience by layering classroom and online learning with a wide variety of digital uh, technologies. Um, LD practices, assessment tools, job aids and social learning. Uh, CPD or continuing professional development requirements are also being improved. We are moderni modernizing and digitizing our approach to CPD and organizational research in the area. Licensees will now report 
CPD electronically streamlining the process. Another exciting area of improvement is the development of our research strategy. Building a focused and strategic research program to support the college's ability to stay at the leading edge of providing programs and services that create a lasting impact nationally and globally so that we can contribute to the immigration system knowledge, position a college as a global thought leader and trusted, transparent and effective regulator. We look forward to working with the NIC and other important stakeholders in academia and throughout the edu uh, immigration sector. A very, very important area of focus has been streamlining the complaints and discipline process, a key area of criticism in the SIM report. So what has been done? The resources of the Professional Conduct Department have increased threefold and staffing in the department has increased to over 26 staff from only four staff in 2017. Additionally, we have been developing a unauthorized practitioner strategy to deal with those who hold themselves out in contravention of Canadian law. So the, the key areas of misconduct, professional misconduct, that we typically deal with are the selling of job offers, failing to cooperate with investigations, misrepresenting application status to clients, falsifying government documents and letters, failing to provide services or act within agreed times. In the area of governance, steps have been taken to improve processes. Licensing exams that meet and exceed international standards and best practices, upgrading language requirements to Canadian benchmark level nine, new essential competency profile that captures the core competencies to practice ethically and professionally, functional competencies that will target the higher risk to public areas of practice. So the new quality management program is being completed uh, with its first pilot uh, to be released August of 2020. It replaces the former compliance audit program. It will help to identify gaps in current competencies due to the rising standards of practice. The aim is to identify proactive measures to help mitigate the risk of reactive measures that focus on professional misconduct. Shifting from compliance audit to quality management is grounded in ensuring licensees are competent in all areas they're providing services. Compliance audit uh, is no longer sufficient with a growing membership. It is limited to what is being assessed. As public and practice expectations evolve at a rapid pace, we need to be able to develop practice supports that promote upgrading. At the core of the quality management process is fostering competence of the licensees. This is accomplished through encouraging self-reflection and application of new knowledge, skill, and judgment, practice relevant and educational in nature, multifaceted and tiered targeted approach, a collaborative relationship with members to motivate improved practice, providing formative feedback, and identify those licensees who require a more in-depth assessment and direct remediation upgrading. In my department, uh, I just joined on January 15th of this year to lead a department with a new mandate that focuses on the importance of stakeholder engagement, outreach, and leveraging an innovative digital technology. This is leading to improved engagement with corporate media social media, and other influencers in the immigration and regulatory ecosystems. I will be leading the branding of the college 
It's an exciting time. Through this process, we will establish the voice and persona of the college, build a new user and digitally friendly website, better serving internal and external users, mobile apps to improve and broaden our interaction with a global audience, and develop digital communication products to broaden our engagement. This will give us the tools to build our outreach to key stakeholders in the immigration journey. Settlement agencies, foreign missions, regulatory partners, government authorities and institutions, licensees and the Canadian public. And partnering with such agencies and institutions as the CBSA, CAFC, IRCC, law societies, and the National Immigration Centre, among others. We will continue to partner on public awareness campaigns with stakeholders addressing issues impacting the immigration ecosystem. The Competition Bureau's Forum on Fraud Prevention, which occurs each month, is a partnership the college will continue because fraud prevention will remain a core regulatory goal of the college. So I hope this has given you a healthy overview of the ICCRC and the journey to the new college. And I know you'll uh, gain additional insight from Dory Jade when he talks about the role of KPIC in the and the professions membership. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Chris, for that overview of the college and um, all the processes that you're having to go through right now in order to ensure that everything is put together pro properly. It must be difficult, especially right now during COVID. Um, I know you were already kind of working remotely before, but um, then planning a college, are you also looking into what that will look like in January when it starts? Is it going to be mostly distance learning uh, for the time being or um, still playing with what that will look like when, when the time comes? Yeah, um, I think, you know what, I think in society generally the feeling is that we've probably moved five years ahead in our distance learning capabilities as a result of this. We were already in the process of moving to distance learning and trying to get out of the classroom. Um, so I think we've, we've fast forwarded that to a certain degree. Um, as I mentioned, we digitized all of our CPD processes. Um, so that's one way of moving to electronic system. Uh, but we will more than likely uh, move sooner to our full distance learning uh, structure uh, instead of maybe a year from now, probably a few months from now. Okay. I, I noticed another um, question just came in here. Yes. With the launch of the new Queen's University program, what will happen with those who are enrolled in a different program at the moment and what will be the requirements for keeping licensing from other currently offered programs. So uh, what is happening in this area, as of uh, July 31st, our IPP program ceases uh, to take in any new enrollment. The program will run its course. Um, it can go up to two years uh, for individuals who are currently registered in the IPP or register before and start before July 31st. But as of August 1st, if you wish to um, enter the immigration consultant field, you will need to complete the Queen, enroll and complete the Queen's um, graduate diploma program and then still write the entrance exam. Um, well, in 2018, an RFP was developed uh, that was issued to institutions across Canada and Queen's um, was at the time the successful uh, bidder uh, for that program. We are also um, looking to secure our French language provider 
uh, because there is a, a very significant part of our membership that uh, resides in Quebec and services francophone immigration in various provinces across Canada. Do you have a timeline of when you hope to have that person chosen by, or that, sorry, that facility, uh, facility you've chosen by? Um, well, it's, uh, it's something that I know our director of prep is working on very diligently, uh, but we would like to have them have that program in place or that provider for the French uh, delivery sooner rather than later. Okay, great. Maybe I'll quickly go over to the phone lines. If anyone on the phone line would like to ask a question to Chris, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. You, to mute yourself, you press star six on your telephone. Okay, great. I have another question for you, Chris. Sure. For the people that are already IPP accredited, uh, you mentioned that there will be um, a an update of their qualification. So is there a specific timeline people must complete this by? And is it actually required of them? Do they have to uh, update their accreditation? Well, it's not so much that they, they will specifically update their accreditation. We will improve um, competency levels through continuing professional development. We are in the process of developing a specialization program for licensees who wish to appear before the IRB. So that is a program that's currently in development. It is built. It will be built into the Queen's Graduate Diploma Program, uh, but it will be an add-on program for current members or current licensees who don't have didn't go through the Queen's program so that's one one um, style of upgrading that will happen but it'll broadly be done through continuing professional development which is a standard practice within the regulatory field it's a, it was a similar challenge um, and process that we dealt with um, with CPA Ontario and the CPA profession when we, we brought together three different designations. Okay, great. Wonderful. Well, if we don't have any further questions for Chris at this time, uh, we'll uh, maybe get going with Dory's presentation. And if you have any questions, we'll, I'm sure we'll have some uh, further discussion time at the end of both presentations today. Thank you very much, Chris, for your time uh, throughout the presentation. Thank you. And Dory, I'm going to switch over to your slides here for you. If you want to take, or okay, you, uh, taken over as presenter. So, um, if you here, I'll pull them back up for you, and we'll just switch to your slides. Okay. You'll just have to unmute yourself, Dory. Yeah, is it okay? Yes, okay. And uh, if you just wanna, sorry, I think they kind of restarted at the beginning there, sorry about yeah. that. If you just Dory. wanna flip ahead. Um, I think Chris ended at about slide 30. Uh, so your slide should start just shortly after that. One more. There we go. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jolene. Thanks, Chris. Um, well, the um, the thing is here. What I want to introduce you to is a little bit before what Chris has uh, brought forward. A little bit of history, which is very important, because immigration consultants have been part of um, immigration in Canada and the whole process for many, many, many years. And then I want to bring forward how, as an association, uh, we do uh, support the membership. 
as you know, uh, members and um, um, association, professional associations and regulators do two separate roles. Um, their pathways sometimes cross, but uh, most of the time they are independent and work in parallel um, on, on two different uh, aspects. One of them is technically preserving and helping the public, which is the role of the college, and uh, KPEC would remain the association of members who will educate, lobby, uh, bring forward matters, and we are very happy to be probably founding members of uh, the NIC. Uh, so I would like to go to the next slide here, and um, I have a two-minute video. I think it's important for um, everyone to watch it. I'm not sure, can we run this video um, right away or because I can't click on the link from here? Okay, uh, sorry, I wasn't aware you had a video. So what, uh, what I'll do is I'll, if you, uh, I think each uh, attendee can click on the video and uh, view it. All right. So, and if not, we'll... then I'll send the link over to everyone following the okay. presentation. That's fine. So um, the video is more about the history. It's very important to be watched. It's about the history of immigration in this country and how Canada has evolved with time and how the whole immigration industry uh, grew. Uh, so it is, uh, it is key in, in uh, the process. So um, in a much shorter historical term, in the last five years, uh, KPIC has been lobbying extensively to get the college where it is today. As Chris explained, we are waiting for proclamation uh, by the minister, which I think is going to happen very, very soon. In our last meeting with the minister, he confirmed that this is uh, happening. So KPIC was, a, um, was instrumental in getting this done. Uh, now, of course, I mean, um, uh, royal assent has been given on the 21st. I'm not, I don't want to be redundant and repeat what Chris has already explained on the 21st of June, um, 2019, so a year ago. So proclamation should happen anytime soon. Um, we are also happy that the membership of ICCRC understood the role of the college and voted for continuance in a very, very large number. I would say over 80%. So that would put the college um, foundations uh, ready to um, uh, for success. So um, again, uh, this just for uh, reference, it's section 84, uh, one subsection one of the act, which allowed this kind of continuation move by uh, ICCRC through the membership. Um, here, there are a few key elements that uh, we need to be aware of uh, in order to understand how this whole concept works. So, um, ICCRC was really under, uh, and is still, under a not-for-profit uh, Canada Corporation Act. This act is really made for associations like KPEC, is made for charity, is made for uh, some other models of uh, not for profit, but never has the power to, cannot give a power to the organization to regulate. And this is why we had to move from this particular act into what today uh, the College Act is providing in terms of jurisdiction that were mentioned by Chris prior to this, including extraterritorial and other powers towards the member. So um, I am. I'm not going to read what is on the slides. I'm just going to explain it. I think it will give uh, a more interactive um, way of presenting. At the same time, if anyone has a question, I'll be happy to take them. So um, we move to um, the bill. Uh, the bill uh, passed. Um, in the budget uh, and um, the budget of 2020 
uh, which was, uh, excuse me, in the budget of 2019. And um, the, um, the government, in particular IRCC, has put a uh, substantial amount of money uh, not to pay, because some, um, there, there was some confusions. IRCC is on the side of the public too. And we have been uh, working with IRCC very closely to get all this done properly. So IRCC is putting a substantial amount of money behind uh, uh, supporting the public and protecting the public. At the end of the day, it is in the best interest of IRCC to have a strong regulator which would um, get the uh, immigration consultants accountable equally to lawyers, uh, immigration lawyers in particular, which are authorized representatives. So they share the same um, field and they share the same um, uh, legal aspect of representing clients. Um, we move to, um, to the fact of uh, getting more resources. Um, the the issue here is uh, we need also to be to be aware that um, in Canada uh, the immigration itself is shared by the um, federal and the provincial. However, the federal has, if I may say, uh, um, the final say or we can say also uh, in many instances have paramount to see uh, in, the, uh, in, in the Constitution. So um, the, uh, the resources that the federal government puts behind um, public protection is way more consolidated and gives us a much more support, which would allow us also to have um, access to foreign jurisdictions. Now, the nuance is the law itself cannot offer power to Canada in a foreign jurisdiction. However, what the Constitution um, allows is the uh, Parliament, the Canadian Parliament, Parliament, excuse me, has extraterritorial powers. Uh, one of the examples is the C uh, law, international law, where Canada, if anything happening within its um, crew or any ship, Canadian ship, so there are laws that Canada can uh, take action. Similarly, in immigration, we know immigration is about people coming from overseas to Canada. So there's a lot in, of involvement with overseas, and that also can open the door to the regulator when the College uh, Act is proclaimed to have agreements with other regulators overseas to assist uh, the um, regulator going after the unauthorized representatives or practitioners. Um, so what is waiting for us in the future? What do we expect is, is going to happen after now that ICCRC and I was very happy uh, hearing to Chris and knowing that um, things are improving in ICRC because this is the goal. A uh, strong profession is about a strong association and a strong regulator. So uh, the creation of supporting regulations and bylaws, you know that now the regulator, as explained, has a lot of work to do uh, to become under the college. And mainly it's about the regulations coming from IRCC, which we are part of and of course the college is part of and some other stakeholders and the bylaws which are mainly um, the college um, bylaws. So it's less involvement of uh, external stakeholders beside uh, comments and recommendations. So then you get additional powers which Chris already mentioned um, enhanced consumer production, which is already mentioned, and integrity of the immigration system, which is something uh, we have been lobbying for for a very long time. Now, most of the time, we ask ourselves, why do we have a regular and an association? 
Well, in Canada, in particular, professions work like this. You have that works with the doctors, with the engineers, pharmacists, you name them, lawyers. Um, any profession in Canada has a regulator and a professional association. That doesn't mean um, that they are um, um, two completely different groups. They are a, two parts of the same profession. However, their role completely um, uh, separate. The first one, which is the regulator, is protects the public and makes sure that the professionals within that profession are practicing using best practice and following the rules. However, the uh, association, which is KPEC, you probably understand our main role is to protect our members, their best interest, and at the same time to give them enough education, enough knowledge, represent them before stakeholders, because the regulator cannot lobby the government to change the law, except in a very tiny section where it really belongs to consumer protection. Otherwise, when um, you, uh, you deal with governments, it is professional associations that represent uh, changes in the law, practice, um, members' interests, and all what comes with it. So KPEC plays this role. Uh, we've been there for over 15 years, 15 years plus uh, about another 20 years back to the existence of two regulators at the time, uh, excuse me, two small associations at the time. So they amalgamated in 2005, and today after 15 years, it's our 15th anniversary. We have over 3,000 members, four chapters across Canada. Um, we have a board of directors and uh, of 11 members and uh, a team uh, of operation uh, to run the organization. So um, having this support, I would say, that allows us to achieve our mandate. And um, here I would take a few minutes just to clarify what our mandate is about. Our mandate is really about education, educating the members. And when uh, Chris spoke about CPD, the role of the regulator is to set the rules of the CPD and a professional association would make sure that it is delivering the highest possible quality within uh, those parameters of the regulator. So, uh, and this way we avoid conflict so the regulator doesn't audit themselves to see if whatever they are offering uh, or setting as a standard is being offered properly. So the, uh, the uh, regulator will play a role of auditing the, um, the work and the delivery of the professional association and probably other stakeholders similar to Queens to, to make sure that they are matching the standard set by the regulator. So that's in terms of education. In terms of lobbying, um, KPEC, as you can see, has worked uh, very, very hard in the last five years to make sure that the college takes place and that this profession is a, um, a part of the Canadian immigration system and the Canadian society. So in addition to that, our lobbying effort would touch upon all stakeholders, IRCC, uh, change of laws, the MPs, CBSA, uh, ESDC, the provinces, ministers, and the list goes on and on. So what our role is, is to make sure that those laws, when our members practice or maintain integrity of the system, and when they impact our uh, members' clients, uh, they are of, uh, I would say, fairness at least, plus uh, making sure that those laws do um, um, do reflect Canada's values when implemented. Then information, uh, we, are, we have the largest uh, library in immigration um, information. 
it is called the ME Center, the Immigration E Center. And I can tell you, I mean, members find a uh, huge wealth of information over there. This has been built for the last 15 years, and we keep adding week after week all kind of important material for our members and practitioners because we have lawyers also in uh, immigration lawyers in KPEC as members. So uh, in terms of recognition, I probably have touched on that by saying um, we put out there the uh, immigration consultants and in the next slide, I will show you how KPEC is putting out there um, our members uh, to be recognized by the public and respected for the best practices we do. I touched base a little bit on, on this slide. I don't want to repeat um, the same thing. I only use slides to guide you, but I would rather prefer um, explaining that to you in a much more um, uh, interactive way. Thank you. So here comes the two key things that allow us to bring forward KPEC recognition. The number one is the education partner program, and the second is my consultant dossier. Those are two platforms which allow the first one, all international students, and we understand right now it is over 500,000 every year. Now, let's put COVID on, on the side for a little bit because um, this is a, um, I would say the last two, three months, but the plan of the government is to increase the international uh, students to come to Canada. <laughs> this is one of the best source of uh, successful immigrants to this country. So what the Education Partner Program is aimed to do, number one, make sure that every international student coming to this country is properly served by an authorized representative. Any agent or recruiter or worker in this field through the Education Partner Program is only an authorized representative. So members of this program are immigration consultants and lawyers and immigration lawyers only. Now, the myconsultant.ca serves a larger um, uh, purpose. It is a platform and I can give you a few numbers. You're talking about over 20 to 25,000 visitors a month um, that come from the top 20 source countries for Canada where you get um, um, potential immigration, uh, sorry, uh, potential immigration seekers to Canada to use the services of an immigration consultant or a lawyer. Uh, technically, uh, in a large majority, it's immigration consultants, but it is also open to those lawyers, immigration lawyers who would like to go uh, through that system. Um, the the benefits are of twofold for the for both, but in particular for the education partner program. Uh, the benefits are for the student who will know upfront that he is dealing with an authorized representative who is regulated by uh, either the law society of the province or by ICCRC for now and probably the college in the future. What this is about is that um, the international student is protected the maximum we can, right, within uh, this uh, legal framework. Now, the other protection that um, is given to the student when working with immigration consultants, they not only know about the uh, school's um, programs, but they are very aware of potential issues that may arise with a student, international student in particular, when going through the immigration process. So that gives more confidence to the student. Hi, Dory. Yes. We have a question in the chat box from Carla. Are, Please. Are RISIAs able to join KPIC or only RCICs? Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, RISIAs can join KPIC uh, anytime. 
However, RECIAs under the regulation, under the current regulation, have limitations in practice, and that will be impacted when they join KPIC2. Therefore, they are members. They can access almost, I would say, all the services, which I'm going to go through a little bit later. However, uh, there are some uh, services that are only for immigration consultants and lawyers. Uh, this is how the regulation is set. It's not that KPIC doesn't want to give them access to those services, but the regulation uh, of the regulator doesn't allow it. So yes, they are welcome and they can be members of KPIC. All right, other questions before I carry on? All right, thank you. So um, I'm moving forward to the next slide. And um, it probably summarizes whatever I have explained about my consultant. So my consultant is a platform that has all kind of immigration news. But at the same time, what is crucial about my consultant is the fact that it offers immigration consultants access to um, to the world, I would say, uh, as you know now with COVID, this is an additional example where anything electronic, IT, um, through the internet is going to strive. And I believe um, uh, the Excel of such a, um, a program is very clear. It ha uh, my consultant is a platform. It is linked to social media. It is linked to um, other stakeholders. It is linked to hundreds and hundreds of authorized representatives and access several millions of impressions every month, plus a net visitors of over 20,000 every month. So that puts it exactly in its, onto its target and uh, puts it forward to those who are seeking immigration to Canada and trying at the same time, indirectly, I would say, to avoid, um, I would say, I would say to, to uh, go against, uh, this is what the regulator IRCC is trying to do. We are trying to do the same, but in a different way. Uh, the more we are present, we believe, the less fraud can exist. Now, there are different ways of combating fraud. This is one of them, to be present as authorized representatives over there, uh, across the board, throughout the year, all the time, um, with over 20 um, source countries. So this is already huge. Um, now we want to move a little bit um, to the services. Sorry for that, yeah. So um, what are the services that KPIC offers to those members? First of all, we offer the ME file. Uh, the immigration file, as we know, the regulator has a requirement, not only RCCRC, but any regulator, in order to uh, be compliant, um, audit, they have uh, other requirements. So the IMI file is one of those online software that would offer immigration consultants, RECIAs, and lawyers whenever they choose to, but we are more directed to immigration consultants, I would say, to have their files properly managed as required by the regulator. Okay, so this is key today in order for a successful immigration consultant in his practice to offer services to their clients that are compliant at all times and any time requested by the regulator so that um, this connection with the regulator, I would say, uh, automated uh, system, uh, be easy to connect and get this material and offer it to the regulator when, when asked. So you have the IMI Center. IMI Center, I just touched, touched based on it before. IMI Center is the largest uh, library. Uh, technically, it has all kinds of resources that you really will not find elsewhere. And um, I confirm that because this is an over 15 year of only immigration building uh, database, information, knowledge, books, 
um, uh, all kind of access to information that not many have all organized in one set with a very strong search engine. So then you have immigration IMI forum. IMI forum is the place where immigration consultants discuss among each other, ask questions, um, and uh, check among each other uh, what, uh, how to resolve any issue that is of complexity. And uh, the IMI forum is uh, one of um, Canada's, I would say, probably um, most advanced forums. It is a closed forum for your information. Only immigration consultants and authorized representatives can access it. At the same time, it has a very strong uh, search uh, engine, which allows immigration consultants to search um, old uh, answers or conversations happening. We, of course, offer more services like any other association, uh, membership uh, insurance. Um, we offer also um, uh, surety bonds. We offer uh, kind of uh, tons of other uh, membership services uh, that are equivalent to other associations. Um, <clears throat> all right, sorry. So um, the the issue here is uh, what would be the future. So technically, in order to 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 have achieved to the college level, we had a strategic plan for the last five years. So now our strategic plan has achieved most of its objectives. We are moving ahead with an evolving strategic plan for another three years. Um, the growth is ongoing. Uh, CAPEC is a very stable organization. The membership renewal rate exceeds uh, 96 to 97 percent in terms of retention. Um, we have a huge support that is coming uh, through advocacy to our relationship with our um, stakeholders, and we in the profession at the uh, forefront. We also are working carefully and uh, closely with a lot of uh, media, uh, uh, media who would ask KPEC uh, to be as a reference on immigration matters. I mean, as you see, um, KPEC is a very challenging and exciting environment. I'm uh, very happy to be the CEO for the time um, of um, passing to the college and working before to get there and uh, continuing to get the um, uh, trust of the board and of course the uh, membership to carry on with this mandate. So uh, thank you all for being here and attending this uh, event. I am also open for any con uh, communication, any questions you may have, and um, I'm available to answer your questions if any. Wonderful, thank you very much.